Hello, welcome to the show. But today we're going to really sit down and talk about innovation. We spend a lot of time, Rajiv, talking about gadgets and devices and gizmos, and that's our job. But today we should just try and break away from that format a little bit to take a look at innovation because it's interesting that at the same time as we're having people saying is innovation starting to dry up in crucial areas like smartphones. Not that much really big stuff is happening in another area. And I know Sadat Patankar is going to say you're talking in my territory again. A lot of innovation coming into the automobile sector. You're seeing it at the Toyota Motor Show, EVs, autonomous vehicles. Talk that Apple and Google may be more interested in cars than they are in their devices anymore. But, but so we're talking about innovation or the absence of it, both things, right? And both. The interesting and thing... And by the way, are some of the companies that have been known as the biggest gadget companies getting slightly bored of gadgets and are thinking more about cars now? Apple well, and Google being two of the leading well, examples. Well, from what I hear, Apple just gave up on the whole car project. So, you know, there are, there are, there are people That's who what may people have are saying. tinkered with it. But then you have conspiracy theorists who are saying that they have announced that because actually they are still wanting to do it. So, you know, you never know. <laughs> so, 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 great. We're going to talk about innovation in the mobile phone, in the gadgets division and in cars, right? Yeah. And a very interesting thing that we're going to go out there is an Indian company that is actually doing self-driving cars. So that really opens things up. Here's the entire lineup that we have for you on the program today. This week, we decode innovation in smartphones, take a spin in some autonomous vehicles, and relax with a couple of great new TVs. All right, let's, let's turn to innovation. Should we start off first with smartphones? And the big grouse that many people are constantly tweeting us and messaging about is, Where's the buzz gone? Where's the sex appeal gone? Why is there not great innovation coming in on the smartphones? Now, obviously people are also getting a little greedy now because... Yeah, this, is, this, this is, is pure and phone. simple. People getting jaded with the wow factor and wanting a wow factor to hit them every three months. And that's not the way the curve of technology yeah. will always So I'm, I'm putting up these comments, right, which you're seeing, <laughs> which various viewers have sent us saying, yeah, it's all becoming boring, this is all dull, there's nothing in my life. Mein. But hang on, like this, just to try and set that to rest, guys. So before you completely give up on the smartphone industry, just in the last devices, you know, you've had, for example, Google Pixel. Maybe the phone itself is not that exciting and they're having hardware problems, but the very possibility of having a bud in your ear that constantly helps you translate in real time. 40 languages in real, in real time. time. Yeah. I think that's exciting. Do, do, don't look at innovation only in one sphere. The mobile phone has had more innovation in the last 10 years than any category since mankind exists, right? But don't look at it only there. Now there will be accessorization with the phone and the phone just becomes your central ground from yeah. IoT, smart sensors, the buds you spoke about, everything else. The phone is reaching some kind of saturation. And, and by the way, another thing for you to keep in mind when you're talking about innovation in and around the phone, to just take up from what Rajiv said, some of these phone companies are now building capabilities into their phone that they themselves may not be necessarily taking full advantage of. Take Apple, for example. Just right now, Apple's saying, you don't need to talk about the fact that we can actually do artificial intelligence on the device. The new iPhone 10 and others are capable of neural, net, uh, neural networking capabilities on the device. Now, maybe they're not taking advantage of it right now. Tomorrow, developers will come, others will come, will be able to build things off that. Same with virtual reality. Exactly. Same so with AR, augmented reality. Uh, all augmented reality, stuff. virtual reality. We showcased a phone on the other show where a Sony phone becomes a 3D marker. You just take up any object around the phone and it will print it on a 3D printer. So there are multiple things that it's being used for. But can I just get into another? Now this is a huge debate, but one that we must get into. They say, be careful what you ask for because it may just come true. The more you push companies towards innovation, the more you call them boring, they will take away basics and try and sell you great future innovation. The kind of things that have died from the 3.5 mm headphone jack to the fact yeah. that you know batteries are now sealed and we don't talk about it at all. The SIM card will go virtual now. There are things that people are starting to live with and are really being forced and are really finding that the basics were better. So do you want to push innovation to the point where people say we are taking away everything clearing the ground for the future yeah. and you'll so, miss the basics. So let me ask you, before we take you through why is it that people are seeing innovation is drying up in the smartphone industry and what our take on this entire matter is, 
One innovation that a lot of people would really love to see in a smartphone that actually requires going all the way back to 15 years ago, radio. Radio people still have on smartphones, so that's not necessarily no, only in the in, something only else. in feature phones and things that are right. Something down else there. that you could actually not have to worry as much about ten years ago as you have to worry about it today. Now come on, I've given you a broad enough here. Well battery, but that's battery. starting to improve. Battery. I mean batteries were the battery. only thing this year that I saw improve in a graph yeah, but not, from but, all others. But if you're asking people what innovation you really want, a battery that lasts me two to three days. That's what the number one innovation that most people would want. Actually, you had phones that could do that 10 years ago, so maybe you need to go back, back to the future. So, so, so a radio battery, 3.5 mm headphone jack could well be the innovation radio is of there. the year. Radio is there in all the phones, yeah, but that's it. So, you know, sometimes <laughs> you need to go back. 10 years from now, if Ten you years look back... from now? Okay, 5 years from years now. 2 years from now. You look back at 2017 and you are saying, there used to be a time when you could go to China or Germany or Japan and have problem communicating with people. But why only How strict? How bizarre is that? You will look back at 2017 and, and the era that has gone before this and think, there used to be a time you could go and visit people and they wouldn't be able to understand each other because but they were speaking why are you language? restricting to language? Think of everything else they can do once the earbuds become intelligent. They could, I mean, you remember the movie Her? Yeah. I mean, an artificial intelligent assistant built into your ear that talks to you at all yeah. times. It's almost there. Now, are the virtual assistants going to go down the her route or the Westworld route is of course a different question. <laughs> okay, yeah. right? okay. This is a family channel so we will not discuss it right now but okay. And from there let's move to the other area that is really buzzing and this Rajiv I have to say is if 2016-2017 we are to look at innovation really what's happening in the auto industry is revolutionary. I can tell you from today Tell me what, the, what do you think the predicted price of petrol is going to be 20 years from now? Uh, or, or approximately one eighth of what it is today. Because there'll be, there'll be no be market for it. Yeah. The entire internal combustion engine is going to die. The internal combustion engine will die sometime in the next 15 years. It's, like, it's years. like saying, how much would you pay for a steam engine today? Nothing. I mean, great for an antique, but other than that, no value. And we saw that, by the way. We saw that in these pictures that we are showing you, Toyota Motor Show, the sort of ele electric vehicles that are being spoken about now by big companies, country after country saying maybe we will not have anything which is not an electric No, some very aggressive ones. We have countries 2025 now. all electric, 2030 we have India saying all electric. So there's a lot out there. But can I ask you one thing? So electric is one part of the innovation, but the really, the really super duper, oh my god, wow, is autonomous. Self-driving cars. So right? I saw it. I, 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 was in, I was in Silicon Valley a month, month and a half ago. I spent some time looking at Waymo, which is of course what Google is doing, looking at the capabilities of it, really trying to understand also how the intelligence is working on this. And it's, and it's really sophisticated. Okay, so, so I'm going to ask you, though, no. that there's an operative question that has to be asked to everybody who's, wow, this is the future. You have a four-year-old boy. I mean, I know you don't. I'm just, this, this is a vivid imagination picture that we have. You have a four-year-old boy that has to now go to school. Would you be okay to just have a car, a self-driving car, come and pick him up? You put your child in that car and wave goodbye. No, of course not. By the, way, by the way, today, today the way the technology is, I wouldn't even trust myself in it. So, so the, by the way, I wouldn't trust myself today in India. But, but when we talk in about India, the future, I wouldn't trust myself talk sitting, about even in, even in Silicon Valley. By the way, I drove with some people who were, who were driving like Teslas and others, which were you know slightly or, or automated. I wouldn't necessarily trust myself even there, you know, without keeping an eye on the on, on the steering wheel. In India, absolutely not. The technology is nowhere close. So, but, but to whenever we have a traffic. what if question, it it supposes perfection in technology. Ten Would to you fifteen years. Do it? Yeah, 10 to 15 years from now, maybe. I really doubt it. Anyway, 10 to 15 so, years from now, why not? Yeah, because of Once the fact that, smart because enough. of the fact that you will realize that there, with all technology, it's the smart. You know how that much human error you have. Do you know how much human error is right now? You know, but at that point, there will be algorithms that are actually also done by humans that will take decisions for you, and, and there will be no liability. From now, self-driving algorithms will most probability be built by the AIs themselves. Okay, we, we should see, maybe, we'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk in the 2032 we'll talk, show version of this, right? Yeah, absolutely. We we'll keep coming back to look at this innovation. And by the way, this is, an in, this is an innovation that we're going to bring to this show itself that we would keep, because so much is happening in the world of technology which is going to shape our lives, we'll keep coming back and doing these innovation technologies specials every two three months or so because there's really a lot happening now 
we should perhaps show them the Indian company. Yeah, so the high tech robotics is a very interesting company, one of the only companies here that's doing self driving and autonom autonomous vehicles. The story we're about to tell today would have seemed like a far fetched fantasy a few years back. So, what is it that we want to show you? Well, we're talking about robotics taking over the world. And no, not in a I robot, humans are evil sort of way, but in a way that is going to make our lives so much easier, faster and a hundred times more efficient. We've got big news from the tech giant High Tech Robotics. They're making some great progress in the field of robotics by introducing various programs in India, which will help in achieving tasks in a far more effective manner. First up, they've created a driverless shuttle. The Rovers driverless shuttle is India's first self-driving shuttle showcasing absolutely state-of-the-art technology which incorporates multi-sensor data fusion to ensure autonomous navigation capabilities. The shuttle has five cameras placed on top which work as sensors to ensure that while the shuttle is going about on its own it detects obstacles in front of it and accordingly comes to a halt or carries on. It also has two cameras placed on both sides to avoid collisions with cars or objects that may appear on either of its sides. For the passengers sitting comfortably at the back, a screen has been placed which displays the distance the shuttle is maintaining from objects all around it, ensuring their peace of mind as well. Another great technology they've developed is Novus Aware. This will prove to be highly fruitful, especially for those drivers who have to drive for long hours without much sleep or rest. If a person starts to doze off while driving, this technology detects the same and gives off a loud beeping alarm to ensure the person stays awake and safe. The technology studies the driver's behavior to ensure that they're in a perfect condition to be driving. It ensures that if they're using their phones or looking anywhere other than right in front, they want to pay attention. And when it comes to developing mobile robots for industrial and warehousing systems, high-tech robotics has come up with some great devices to help in these industries as well. Industries will soon completely rely on these robots that lift up wooden boxes and keep them at the desired location as programmed, avoiding obstacles along the way. The robot has to be given the desired path to be followed and it shall follow and carry on the work seamlessly, day or night. Once the map is set for the robot, it shall follow the path to the destination, maneuvering and navigating as needed, depending on actual circumstances that may arise and may not have been perceived beforehand. So the robots are definitely well equipped to handle changes in their programming as per the requirement. All this automation has definitely got us excited and we cannot wait to see other innovations coming from this space in the future. When we think of autonomous driving, you know, there's a misnomer which uh, has been propagated from the West that it's totally driverless. Our take of autonomous driving is slightly different. Today, in India is one of the highest fatality rates, number of accidents, 1.5 lakh people die in India every year. Our, uh, you know, vision and mission in India specifically is around how to make vehicles and roads safer in India. So our products are, while they are catered towards autonomous driving in the West, they are more for safety, enhancing safety on Indian roads. Co-powered by Nexa. Okay, so now obviously it's going to take us some time in India before we start really getting excited about that car technology because it's going to be years before you can buy any of that here in India. Televisions though, to come back to more, you know, <laughs> domain yeah, Innovation of this show. on ground. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, now TVs, we've been, it's like every couple of weeks a new TV is coming to be a really good contender up there. So we've seen the Sonys and the LGs which are probably leading the pack right now. Yes, yeah, so Samsung so Sony, surprisingly. LG, Samsung, I think, I think QLED not is, really is, there. Is, is now, they're, 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 the Samsung is going to have to make a move now because these two seem to have taken, a, taken an edge and Samsung used to be the leader. Yeah. Panasonic. 
another historic leader which has been somewhat dormant for many years. And they were playing a very different game in India. They were playing the mass market price leader game, doing very mass market 32 inch, 42 inch, 50 inches and not doing premium, which is strange because that brand name has always been associated and is, you know, usually in India recognized to be... But by wow. the way, Samsung did that globally. They killed product lines. They were, people said they had the best plasma in, in the world and they just killed it for reasons that nobody quite understood. Well, that's so. because again, you're doing the same thing. Now, you, you want old technology and you're not willing to give it up for something better. And OLED is way better than a plasma, but you don't agree. No, right? Right? Anybody would today agree with that. I'm saying when they killed the when plasma four years ago, it, it, it was too heavy. And, you know, LED was... So, so Panasonic comes up with 4K TVs, but I'll tell you, the 4K TVs are great and we're going to do two of them, right? But it's what they are giving free with the TV that I find really interesting. So now... Don't audio. tell me a wireless speaker. Yeah. Now, again, you're going to say this is your idea. Of course it was. They should give Four you something with no speakers. No, they and should you just me, add your own. They should simply give me a commission on every wireless speaker that's ever sold. That's you all know I how dangerous this is saying this on the show like this. So, so, I I but mean. this is the cool one. So not only does this work with your TV as a wireless speaker, it's also Bluetooth. That means you can use it as your home entertainment system, even if your TV is off. So that's an interesting one from Panasonic. Let's take a look. Thanks to the smartphone revolution, the way people consume their video content has been changing. However, for a rich experience, many still rely on television sets that offer immense quality both visually and audibly. Enter Panasonic. Understanding the need of the enthusiast, they've launched a new 4K Ultra HD television and they've coupled it with their UA7 sound system that's being offered for free along with the television set. The company claims that this new series EX750 and EX600 will bring home the cinematic experience. And when is that not a good thing? The EX750 is the flagship model and it comes in a 65 inch model that costs a princely 3 lakh 10 thousand rupees. The set comes equipped with a 550 nits super bright panel and is powered by the Studio Color HCX2 processor that's been tuned to suit Hollywood cinema at the Panasonic Hollywood Lab. The television boosts picture quality using technology that digitally dims LEDs while carefully controlling the physical backlight operation with additional processing that makes for better localization of black levels. The EX750 also comes with 4K Hexa Chroma Drive Pro, which is the company's own color processing technology which it claims provides a vivid color reproduction with a wide color range, resulting in a great 4K viewing experience. Moreover, the TV's switch design with swivel technology allows the EX750 to fit into your decor more comfortably, while providing you with a perfect viewing angle. The television runs on a system crafted from Firefox OS, and they've called it the My Home Screen 2.0. This one allows users to create custom folders and group apps according to their preference. And the remote also comes with a My App for quick access. There's also compatibility with apps like Netflix, Amazon Prime Video and YouTube, so you'll never run out of things to watch. However, the real star of the show is the EX750's accessory, the UA7 sound system. It has a total of 10 speakers, consisting of 4 woofers, 4 tweeters and 2 super woofers. It offers 1700 watts of sound and features airquake based technology which the company claims can produce a level of dynamic sound that simply can't be imagined from its slim, elegant body. Of course, the lack of both Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos is quite evident. And since competitors in the same price range are offering either one or a combination of both, it will be interesting to see whether the EX750 gains as much ground as the company intends for it to. All said and done, Panasonic is really pushing the envelope when it comes to creating a cinematic experience for your living room and seems to be managing to get there too.